and welcome to this episode 20 here in 2021 on Britt Arnild's world here on YouTube. First of all, thank you very, very much for all the comments and likes you give me when I post my episodes. I, as you know, I read them all. I try to comment to all. And I think it's a wonderful way to have a kind of two way, not face to face, but still a two way contact with you. So please continue to write me and to comment and to press the like button and so on. I really appreciate it. As always, you have heard my mother playing the piano and you have seen some footage from some of my most recent knitting projects. And the things you have seen in the, in the start video is what I plan to talk about uh, when it comes to knitting in this episode. There will also be a little about uh, knitting. No, I mean about quilting. Uh, a short film I made out in the garden the other day. In the Norwegian episode, I read again a chapter from this old book, Heidi, by Johanna, the, the, from Switzerland, Johanna Spyri. It's an old book which my mother-in-law got in 1930. So it's more than 90 years old. The book was written back in 1880 or something. So in the Norwegian episode, I read one chapter in every episode. So if you want to listen to me reading Norwegian, you can go over to the Norwegian episode. And when you see me sitting with my glasses on, I'm reading from the book. I'm not going to read to you though, not yet. Maybe later, we'll see. Uh, and there will be some filming from the garden in the end of, the, of this episode, as usual. The garden is beautiful now, new flowers coming every day and we have had such amazing summer weather for weeks now, which is quite unusual to have these warm sunny days at this time of the year and for so long. I mean, we can have a day, we can have two days, maybe even a week, but three weeks and it still continues. It's amazing. But from Thursday. I think rain will come, so we will see what happens. The garden is beautiful right now, and my husband and I, we are out there. Well, he has he has his job he has to do, so he has his home office up here in the first floor. But as soon as he's finished and we have had dinner, we are out in the garden enjoying the work we do. Uh, but let's talk about knitting. First of all, I have two uh, questions I will try to give answers to. I got them in a comment in the previous episode. One of you asked about this uh, sweater, children's sweater, and if I had a pattern. Yes, it's knitted um, using a pattern, but I made the sweater, I think it was for Marta. Marta is 25 now, or maybe it was uh, our oldest daughter Ing Ingrid, and she's, she will be 32 this summer. And unfortunately, I don't know where I have the pattern. I think it might be something made by Sannes Garn, Sannes Jan here in Norway, but I'm not quite sure. So I can't help you, sorry. And then I also got the question about these sit-ons, which I make, how I make them. What I, this is for a child, so it's, uh, it's a small size. Uh, when I made the one for me, I used um, double thread of this Plötu Lopi, the, um, the Icelandic yarn, which is not twisted. Uh, I used it double and I, I cast it on uh, 125 stitches on, Norwegian, on the needles uh, 5 millimeters, which we call number 5 in Norway. And this, is, I think it's 110 stitches, but it's double. Uh, yes, you can see it on this one. So when I finish knitting it, it looks like this. And then I fold it and just sew it together. And I have one like this. 
So uh, about 110 stitches and I knit till I have the height I want and sew it together. And then these and also the one I'm working on, this one, uh, they will go in the washing machine very, uh, very slowly, very fine to get it a, a short wash. So it can felt just a little. I don't want it to felt a lot. And as because as it is double, it's still uh, soft enough to use when you are out hiking. So I think that these three will be finished um, next episode, next week. And then I have a, a tale to tell about them. So I hope, well, it was not exactly an answer to both the questions, but it was an answer to one of them. I have called this episode uh, snail, uh, I'm not quite sure what I will call it in English, but it will be something about the snail speed and slow knitting or something, uh, or knitting in snail speed. Maybe I'll call it knitting in snail speed. And I finished this first snail which I showed you last time. And this time I plan to show you how I make them. I have, I have something here. Here um, I cast on um, 13 stitches with the needles two and a half millimeters. And I knit till I have it as long as I, uh, as I want it. This is going to be the, the body of the snail. And you see here is the snail's house. And I've also knitted, almost finished, the snail's house, which was a long uh, row with these 13 stitches also. And I fold it together like this. I'm going to knit a bit more on this. So many threads here. Yeah, here I have it. Here you see it. And this one is, of course, going to sit up on this and this is a little longer than it shall be because I'm going to fold it back to make the head. Can you see it? <laughs> I, I'm doing a bad job here I think. But you see, this here is the long one and I fold it down here to make the head. Then I use what we, this what we call flower threads here in Norway. This kind of string which you can form like you want to and I take maybe half a meter of string or something and I start weaving the string in here from the back of this the body of the snail so on both sides back here I need I um, weave in string as I have done here started back here and weave it in on both sides up here and I come up to the head and I have uh, maybe a kind of long string uh, left over here. I fold it back, I twist it and then I make a kind of uh, circle to make this. I haven't checked the name since last time, but this Fölehorn, we say in the witch and what the snail has. So this is how I make the snails. I plan to write it down in my knitting blog, Maskerade. The knitting blog is in Norwegian, but you can of course always use Google Translate. And if there is something you don't understand, you can always ask me. And the string is, uh, it's a very smart thing because it can help you to fold the knitting to form the snail just how you want it to. I mean, it can, um, put its head down to look at something, put the head up and so on. So it's a, it's a very smart way of being able to form the snail. I plan to make a whole family. The next one I will make will be green, I think. And I will have them out in my greenhouse as a decoration. So they are my snails knitted in snail's pace, snail's speed.
Do you say snail's pace or snail's speed? What do you use? I'm not sure, I have just Googled it, so. Um, you saw in the beginning film that I was making a pattern for a little toddler's dress. Here is the pattern. I can't show you the dress because I have already given it to my granddaughter. She's coming soon, so maybe I have to stop filming sometime because I know little Vida, which she will be 10 months next week. She, she will come to visit grandma today. Uh, but I, the, um, the dress I gave her was a dress I knitted for my oldest daughter, Ingrid, back in the summer of 1990. So it's an old one. I didn't have a pattern then. I had the yarn and I just formed the dress on the girl as I knitted. So I drew it down and I have written all the measurements on this. And on the back side, I have written a clear a detailed description on how I um, how I knitted the dress and I also had some leftover yarn in this beautiful knitting bag um, from when Marta our youngest daughter was uh, a little girl Marta is 25 now so the yarn is old and I had enough for a dress for Lida I have started this yarn is uh, a little um, probably a little thicker than the yarn I used in the original dress. So when I had used one skein, I realized, oh, the dress is really too big. So I had to start all over again and it will be like this. So probably in, uh, in next episode next week, I will have the dress ready for you to see. I had planned to have it finished this time, but then something came in the way. Uh, I don't know if you know about uh, Kameborna, the, um, a knitting podcast with Sofia Kameborn. She makes it in um, Swedish with English subtitles and it's the best podcast. Uh, I, I love it. I will put the link down here so you can find it. Uh, Sofia is a friend of mine. She's Swedish and just now she's doing a pilgrimage. She started actually last summer. She planned to go from the eastern coast of Sweden and all the way to, um, to Trondheim where we have um, the goal, a pilgrimage uh, site, the cathedral, the Nidaros Cathedral. So she's still working, uh, walking in Sweden. She walked one or two weeks last summer. She's walking two weeks now and hopefully if the borders open she will come to Trondheim in September walking as a pilgrim. She started uh, the walk now on Friday and on her Instagram account, she showed us uh, the uh, mittens like this, Oops. miniature mittens, mini mittens. She gave, she had the pattern out on Ravelry a few weeks ago called soft snow mittens. And they are in the normal size, but with this pattern. So now she had made it into a miniature and she wrote on the Instagram post that she will knit, she will try to knit one mini mitten every day during her pilgrimage for two weeks now. And this inspired me. I am not a um, knit along person actually, but this one really inspired me. So I did this one on Friday. And then when I had finished it and I was out in the garden to taking some photos, I thought, oh, maybe. I will make um, a string of them to hang in the greenhouse and I will let the garden inspire me uh, in the colors for the, for the mittens. So then on day two, which was Saturday, I let the um, flowers on the apple tree inspire me to make this one. On Sunday, I found a sparkling orange flower. I don't know the English name. But you saw it in the film in the beginning inspired me to make this then um, yesterday the chips were blooming so I let the chip flowers inspire me to make this one I love using this very tiny let me show you tiny leftover balls of yarn I have 
I have millions of them, of course. And oh, I really love to, um, to use them in my knitting. Just like I do in the snails also, I use a lot of these oops, tiny leftover balls. And then today I hope to be able to knit another pair of miniature mittens today. And I was out yesterday trying to find the correct colors. These are almost correct. I have a, do you call it snowball bush? That's the Norwegian name, snowball busk. It's a, it's a bush out in the garden. And um, the flowers are like quite big snowballs uh, around. Tennis balls, snowballs, all in white. And this year, it's almost blooming now. It will, the blooms will have the, the, they will be white, but for the moment they have more this uh, yellowish greenish color. And this year there will be so many snowballs on the bush. I will film it for next week's episode. So this is the yarn I hope to use for, uh, I hope to, I will use for today's mitten. I hope to be able to make a mitten today. So that's the knitting I wanted to talk about. Let's go over to quilting. In my previous episode, I showed you in, in the um, film in the beginning uh, a little footage of this quilt, but I forgot to talk about it. So that's what I'm going to do today. It is a quilt I made back in um, around 1990, I think. It's made of um, old uh, worn jeans and uh, shirts. All of the um, clothes worn by me, my husband and the children. It is pieced together by machine and then it's hand appliqued, the hearts and the teddy bears. I have not done um, any quilting, but I have knotted, kind of bind together the quilt with knots, with um, embroidery floss and also with buttons in the stomach of the bears. In 1994, the year of the Olympics in Norway, there was an, um, a quilt exhibition at the Maihaugen Museum in Lillehammer. And I was very proud that this quilt was uh, chosen to be among the quilts on the exhibition. So the whole family, we went down to Lillehammer that summer and uh, watched the exhibition, of course, and especially my quilt. Today it uh, hangs in the spare bedroom we have, a guest room. Actually, it's what I call the children's room. We have uh, a bed there for grandchildren. We have several beds there, but one of them especially for the small grandchildren when they sleep over. And the quilt is hung on the wall just above this bed. Before I end today's episode, I have two books to show you. One of them is in Norwegian. It's called Kuftami. Kufte is a, a traditional sweater, a traditional cardigan, I mean, because kufte is usually open. And this one, it's, it's a beautiful book. I got it for my birthday from um, a knitting friend. And all the, um, the cardigans in this one are inspired by churches in Norway, different churches. This is the cathedral in Stavanger. And you can look through the whole book. This is a church called Bud Church from 1717. And the whole book is filled with um, beautiful photos of churches and then um, kufte inspired by the special churches. And the, the book also has uh, poems written by a very famous, very well, very well known uh, poet here in Norway, Trygve Skaug, 
I'm not sure if any of his poems are translated and the way he writes it might be very difficult to translate it into another, another language also. Poetry of course is always difficult to translate. But then I have an English book I want to show you. A treasure which I got in the mail uh, the other day from Amazon. May Morris, Arts and Crafts Designer. You might know uh, William Morris. He was uh, her father. Uh, he, I have a book uh, about his art and I have been to many times to Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Uh, I've been in the cafe there together with Fran. Hello Fran. And Fran also was the one who introduced me to, to William Morris' uh, special exhibition, a permanent exhibition at the v Museum. And I didn't know that he had a daughter who was also a well-known artist, arts and crafts artist and designer. So when I heard about her and heard about this book, I was, uh, it didn't take me long to order the book from um, Amazon. She is, has, um, she is very inspired by her father, I guess. And her designs are so delicate, so beautiful. Isn't this, oh, I'm sorry about the reflections. Isn't this beautiful? I got the book the other day and I have only uh, very shortly started to read it, look through it. But I know that this is a treasure which will inspire me a lot the coming weeks and months and probably years. So maybe like um, the Austrian Swedish designer Joseph Frank inspired me to knit all these wrist warmers during the period of Lent. Who knows? Maybe May Morris will be my next inspirator. Her colors are very different from the colors of Joseph Frank. He, his colors were more sparkling, um, uh, clean like the rainbow colors. Here you have more the watercolor types. Very romantic, I would say. Here is a picture of May Morris. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this book and let it inspire me. Okay, enjoy the garden. Thank you for being with me for this uh, half an hour or something. See you next week and I look forward to hear from you. Bye.